Well, thank you very much, Rajendra. At the outset, I ask for benevolence from all your expert panelists and your listeners, because as you rightly said, I'm not the orthopedic, although I come from the same stable where the orthopedicians were trained long back in 70s. That is under the guidance of uh, Professor Dr. Vikram Marwa, and then we had a clinic together for nearly 15 years. So that is my claim to be friend of orthopedicians. Uh, at the same time, say whatever I'm saying probably would apply to most of the situations. Let's take the history of OPD. Where did the OPD began? Where the terminology came? Actually came back way back into 17th century where patients were counseled in a hotel. I want you to mark that word. They were counseled in a hotel where the treatment was explained and argued. Now, the word hotel will come back a little bit later into my talks. But mind you, it was not an hospital. The OPD were run into a hotel. Now, what is the OPD? Just decide that. And it is a place where you actually don't give any therapy, but it is mostly you schedule yourself for some hours of the day to spend with your patient explaining and telling them, but there is no IPD. And it's only about the diagnosis and talking. What the word diagnosis and talking. Now let's see what the OPD is like in the West when you take the emotional aspect. That's how the OPD is like in the West. I'm not taking this picture from the, from the Google or one of the affluent hospitals in America. Look at what they look in our country. It's not comparable. It's a college where I trained myself. Look at another district general hospital, not very far off from where I practice. It is again not comparable. And therefore, this is, of course, we all know PD Hinduja Mumbai. Look at their affluent OPD. And look at this mediocre or modest OPD of mine. So what I want to stress the point here, that when we want to talk about OPD, the ambience across the board in our country and what the books say is not the same. So when I Googled up to see this talk, uh, frame this talk, I realized that nothing can come from the net. It has to come from your heart. And then say, look within. Now, what does the patient really want when it comes to the OPD? He wants clean, healthy food. He doesn't want the ambience of a, a big hotel in Dubai, or he doesn't want even a roadside cafe where he's scared whether the food is good or bad. So what is our job is to create an ambience in the OPD, which is just about right, where he feels that he is getting nice, clean, healthy atmosphere. And emotional management, that's a tough ask. But if you ask it, it's the ability to really accept successfully and controls one's feeling. That's the definition of emotional management. It's a skill. And here we are going to cooperate with the patient, train him into accepting the situation and act positively. What the patient wants? There are some unspoken anxieties when he enters your clinic. Is it a disease which is going to kill me? Is it going to maim me for the rest of my life? Is it going to disfigure me, particularly in my field where I'm doing a lot of head and neck cancers? Will it create a social stigma on me? And financially, will I be set back financially or my work will, will I lose my job? Can I do my job properly? What does the patient want? He really wants the point stressed very well in the earlier talk is unhurried attention. He's always anxious when he enters, will doctor listen to me? Will I be able to tell my symptoms? You see, a lot of your patients come back with written down things. And it is very silly to say, oh, give me that paper, I'll read it for you and just get on with it. No, the man has spent some time to write that down, to have a respect, to reciprocate your feeling and give him back the respect and answer him, tick mark one by one and go along with him when he reads out what he has brought with him. And of course, in case I forgot, if a patient will say, doctor, I might have forgotten something. He said, don't worry, ask me again, plenty of time with us and maybe give him a chance to tell him the symptoms again. Now look at it, the confidentiality, what the patient wants. I'm showing you this picture from my own OPD where the old man sitting there has an oral cancer and he with him, I got two people. Now I must be understood, understanding that who are these guys? One is his son, the other one is his son-in-law. It's not the same thing. So he doesn't want all of the things which are going to tell to be exposed to his son-in-law. Maybe he wants them to be told to his son. So to quickly latch on to it, that what am I talking and what is the confidentiality? And in that confidentiality part, a lot of people don't want their, diagnose to be, their diagnosis to be disclosed 
to the people they don't trust because there may be some implication. I told you one of my patients, and he's from Calcutta, he came to me saying that, Dr. Mere Gale me machika kata atka hai. I looked at the throat, there was no machika kata, obviously a big growth. But he wanted me to play along with this machika kata. And the reason was he had five son in laws who were pouncing on business. He didn't want them to know that he has got a cancer and maybe a very limited future. Some of the questions which patients do have on their mind, can I tell him that I have a whiskey at night? Can I tell him all about my bad habits? Or can I tell him about my psychiatric problem? They are very worried. And this puts them very emotionally onto a back foot. Be open, be open minded. And I remember my wrongs in England days that on the ward, patients were actually given their daily requirement of alcohol without the need to be shy about it. Because one of the big things that may happen post operatively that you take away their alcohol quota every night they have by saying, oh, no, 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 my hospital doesn't allow any alcohol and you will have a problem on your hand. Then concern for the family. We, I mean, this point very well said. It is not sympathy. It is empathy. You are not God Almighty above. Oh, my God, you've got this very poor fellow you are. But you be very sympathetic. And of course, do have the concern for their privacy. They may want to take some things, some advices and discuss, please talk to my mother. Common advice, don't tell my mother, she is very, very weak, she will not tolerate it. It's not true, but at the same time, do respect that and play along sometimes. Now, what does the patient wants? He wants to know the bills, he wants to talk about the policies, and the other thing which is happening more frequently now, and this is happening in the metros where a lot of uh, ITO people are working and say, will doctor take an undue advantage of my financials or social status? Rich man, poor man, God's man too. And my philosophy is be equal to all. Now coming to the COVID part of it, in the body language we talked about, we are creating modern times impediment. We look at the computer, we don't look at the patient. We are more interested in making the data into our stream. We also have a bell ringing all the time. And I've seen people, I've seen consultants who actually put, this is happening in the metros where the pressure is time. They put a clock and say, every 10 minutes, new patient. And it's a sand clock working, picking there. And the patient turns so they turn the clock down. He says, second consultation begins. Please do not do that. Avoid the temptation of saying, oh, my secretary or my fellow will explain this to you. They have come for you, not for your secretary, or not for your fellow. And again, these COVID protocols, I'm deliberately showing this picture, they create a barrier between you. I mean, look at me sitting there, wanting to see my patient with all my gear of COVID. Then there is a transparent screen, and there is a shield, and the patient is also similarly put, distances your patient. So it is not distancing. Please don't distance. Follow social distancing, but don't distance your patient because he doesn't want it. And this is the last slide of mine where I'm sharing with you my OPD in the area where I am famous to be working with the thyroid, this is my Chikaldara Megat skin. This man approaches me and he expects these things from me. He wants me to be honest, on clarity of my decision, wants the reassurance, and above all, he wants my trust. May I humbly suggest to this August audience, because a lot of things more to come, we must, in terms of what patient wants from me, if I deliver them emotionally, because that's my topic or my work, I would say, sit at the level of the patient. A lot of people have a tendency to have a very high chair for themselves. And they have a huge chair. Say, what is language? Something covered in the earlier talk. And the patient has very mortally low-lying tables. So that creates you in a higher position than your patient. Please avoid that temptation. Have a chair which is exactly the same as that of your patient and have a good eye contact. Be focused. Don't talk to people. You have a habit of taking phone calls. Oh, I'm so busy. I got umpteen number of phone calls coming. Don't be in a rush to take. Put it on a mute or give it away. Put that phone call called mobile away from you so that you have focus. Use the language. You see, I have practice in Nagpur and a lot of my patients are coming from Madhya Pradesh and they have a different accent and different language. If I can latch on to that accent and language, I create a, a direct Contact with them. Ah, ye meri baat sunta hai, ye meri baat samajta hai. In my field of thyroid, because the recurrent nerve is very close and we are worried about the policies, and drawing helps me. I don't know how it works for orthopedic. Also, we have a nurse. Don't intercept your patient because emotionally you get traumatized. If you insult him, if you his symptoms might be allowed. 
And second and the last, but not the least, is don't tell him that you are very busy and you are pressed for time and your patient is the most precious thing at that point of time because he has come to you from a long distance, sparing a lot of his time also. So you must reciprocate your time. Again, I thank you for your valuable and listening and maybe I'll take some questions on what I said. Again, thank you all very much one more time. Thank you all. Thank you.